Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 265, featuring the second of a two-part interview series with Mr. Yuho Salaba, one of the co-founders of Almost Human and the developers behind the Legend of Grimrock series. This part of the interview, we talk about the changes that were made to the engine for the second game, including in a really awesome new playable race, a new character class. Uh, we also talk about puzzle design, the iOS version, and what lies in the future for Almost Human. Will we see a Grimrock 3? A lot of great stuff in this uh, episode, so without further ado, here is Mr. Yuho Salala. So I really like some of the changes that were in part two. Uh, probably my favorite thing, and this was a huge flaw, I mean just a gaping flaw in the first game was... I'm missing the rats. Just... <laughs> yeah, I don't know what, what happened there. Yeah. Uh, but you guys made up for it with this one for yeah. sure. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen... A, Maybe I'm missing. This probably been this probably been done at some point, but I, I don't know a game that actually lets you play as a rat. I'm not sure, yeah. Yeah, ratlings. So how did this uh, the ratlings come about? Mm -hmm. Was it you guys saw my video review and thought, okay, we're gonna show him. <laughs> <laughs> so you want rats, huh? <laughs> uh, we'll give you rats. Um, I guess it was um, again. It was an um, organic thought process um, we we are we want to have um, uh, a non-standard uh, species in the game so there, there's no uh, elves or dwarf or dwarves or halflings who needs a dwarf when you got a, a rattling <laughs> yeah but, but then the thought of rattlings is kind of cool and uh, uh, actually they have some some scavenish uh, uh, vibe in them, and uh, I, I just personally love Warhammer stuff, so it was fun to design those uh, rattlings. All oh, those uh, uh, Warhammer has a rattling kind of creature. Yeah, they have the Skaven. Uh, oh, rattlings. Skaven! Oh, yeah. I haven't, haven't really played much of that series, yeah. but they're, they're cool. So um, we thought that uh, they they have some kind of like like weird primeval stuff going on with, with like human mind also so yeah. I really like that special trait they've got the, the mutant yeah it's cool that is cool yeah. yeah I was thinking about making a party with just all rattlings yeah one guy was um, actually let's play doing let's play videos with uh, rattling farmers <laughs> it was fun <laughs> yeah that's another thing the farmers I mean, I haven't heard of anybody doing that either. So these guys, they get a, instead of they don't get their experience points the normal way, right? Instead, they yeah. they're, they're eating. <laughs> yeah, they, they need to eat to get gain experience. So where did you get that <laughs> idea? Um, I guess it was, I guess it was a coder, um, and I guess we were having lunch at the time. So <laughs> and uh, it, it was something. Like, what were you eating? <laughs> we were eating um, uh, Peter bread. <laughs> No, um, uh, it, it felt something like uh, we wanted it to be a, a, like a challenge class, you know, that's that's probably... Well, it's like an expert that, level class. Yeah, that's probably something you wouldn't pick on your first playthrough, but after, when you know the places where you can, where, where you can get a lot of food and uh, where you don't get a lot of food, so you can, you know, like play around with the... Uh, amount of food you're giving to the uh, farmer so and naturally you can go just jump on in the river and catch all those fishes to <laughs> level up hmm. I was wondering if you could, I don't guess the farmer I haven't played as a farmer yet but uh, they can't actually plant food or seeds or anything no they no no sorry. is that perhaps coming in a later edition um, I guess it would uh, <laughs> Well, I remember there's some rogue. Some of the rogue games I played have farmers. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know if they can plant food in those. In trouble with the balancing. <laughs> uh, so what you know in the firearms too? I don't think those were those in the first game. No, no. Okay, so those are new. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, however, there, there does seem to be a problem with the ammo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, can you make ammo somehow and I just haven't discovered it? Or is it just, there's just a finite supply? No, it's, 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 um, um, uh, you can't craft those, but, uh, you can't, you can't craft those, right? No, can't. Oh, can't, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, um, but there's plenty of ammo around if you know where to dig. Oh, well, <laughs> it's all my fault. <laughs> oh, you can dig for it. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just go dig around. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I keep finding all these cool rifles and things, but I don't have enough bullets. Yeah. But uh, they are meant to be, uh, you know, used sparingly. So uh, we didn't want to outbalance them because they have some cool features on it, like the six shooter and stuff like that. So it be too fair uh, compared to the other other, other the, um, throwing weapons or, or the bows. That's gonna have it's a fun role playing uh, with that hand cannon, those cannonballs, and <laughs> I mean realistically, who wants to carry around like twelve cannonballs? I mean. <laughs> Strength to carry one, so <laughs> I always drop it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know, is, are there any plans to have some kind of store in the game, or some place to sell the stuff you find, or um, you know, is that perhaps is that something that you might consider at some point? I don't think so, because um, it would, you know, uh, the. There would be, there would have to be like a, a storekeeper to it, and I don't think it would fit the theme, theme there. So probably no. Maybe some kind of vending machine. <laughs> I just think it'd be kind of cool if you could sell some of the gear you don't need and get some ammo, or something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, let's see what else. But anyway, I do like the the firearms. Yeah, they're cool. We were. I was personally. I was a bit skeptical uh, when we started th thinking about it. But uh, I, when I when I shot the first time, then I, I was sold. It was so cool. Yeah, there's something about just hearing that boom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or when the Argus uh, like fails and explodes to your face. Yeah, that's not so. <laughs> that's not so. Yeah. So David Beatty had a question about, are you planning, I guess this is for future games, uh, but are you planning any multiplayer capabilities? To Green Rock? Yeah. Uh, no. Just yeah, because sure that would... We, we would have to, uh, uh, the, the movement would be really weird, uh, I'd say, because people want to pass each other in a corridor, for example. There's no way to pass. And uh, then we would have to uh, model every possible character combination that we have. So that's that's something we just can't do physically. And uh, I'm not totally sure if it would be fun, fun, fun game feature. Yeah, I just I don't know how it would work really. Yeah, me neither. Uh, okay, so. You know, one thing I really liked was this the story I read about the you guys put this touchscreen interface in uh, for the guy that I, I guess he was says he was using a mouth stick for typing. So I guess he was pretty oh, yeah. uh, pretty serious uh, seriously disabled. So it, it it was time of the first first Green Rock, and uh, uh, I guess he's he's some kind of has a, some kind of disability that he uses some kind of mouth stick to control his uh, computer and uh, uh, he was um, he was uh, writing to us I guess it was in our blog or something like that that uh, could we include the uh, you know the traditional uh, directional arrows so we, we thought that well, why not uh, the old games had them and uh, um, that's that's one of those uh, you know lucky shots that we got with the first one because it, it went semi viral the story uh, so it was all over Reddit and stuff like that so it was it gave you guys a lot of positive karma yeah yeah but definitely something that that, that wasn't planned some uh, 
cynical people who <laughs> think it was a publicity trick, but no, it was just like a lucky, lucky thing. Was it? Uh, is it an option for the second one too, or? I don't yeah, know. yeah, there. Oh, I'd say that I guess there are still the arrows are optional there. Yeah, I haven't really dug into the options, but you can turn that on if you want. Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. So, do you have plans at some point to start doing box copies of these games with the cloth maps and uh, yeah, all we, the goodies? We've been drooling about like. I see you got the T-shirt yes. there. Are you selling those T-shirts somewhere? Um, no, but I, 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 I'll give you one. <laughs> We, got, we have a box, box of them, so I, I oh. guess. Um, but um, we've been talking on and off about the, you know, something like special edition or some stuff like that. Yeah, but there you now you're talking. It's it's just business wise, it's just not uh, sensible. It's it's we we wouldn't get anything. It, it would be so much work, and then we would need to get or. Uh, PG ratings and stuff like that. So it, it's 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 not that simple simple of a process. But I'd love to have like figure and a big map poster and stuff oh, like that. So, but big box. Like, yeah. Wouldn't you have fun designing the box? <laughs> yeah. Because but um, we've been talking a lot about it. So but so far we haven't come up with anything that's that's um, you know like useful so it's a bit shame hmm. maybe you could outsource that to the fans put together a little yeah we, we, we've been given some uh like contacts from around the world of doing that but uh like i said it's it's not the best business so uh, maybe as a as a fan fan favor maybe but we'll have to see we all, all would love to have a copy you know Book, bookshelf, or, or you, you probably would love to have one back, back in here. <laughs> yeah, I just got the, I don't know if you keep up with those, uh, you know, the Shadowgate Kickstarter, uh, Zojoy. Did you play Shadowgate on your Nintendo? <laughs> um, I, uh, I remember the name, but I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I, I've been playing it. That's one of those, it's, it's one of those, it's a really cool adventure game. It's, you know, it's, uh, well before Myst and, and such, but... But they just uh, got their box copies and cloth maps out the door. But they had done a Kickstarter. Are you guys going to do it? I, don't, I guess you don't really need to do a Kickstarter. Well, probably not. But, um, yeah, we'll have to think about it. We, we'd love to do it, yeah. But mm-hmm. A Kickstarter it's, it's, or the box copy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the box copy, yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's not that simple, simple, as, simple thing. No, definitely not. Especially, I guess, being in Finland probably wouldn't help too much, huh? Yeah, no. <laughs> we would have to get the uh, uh, couple of different, uh, you know, ratings and stuff like that. So, and they're they're pain in the ass. So, it's it's so much easier with just digital only copy. You don't have any. What's the problem with the? I mean, there's nothing really questionable about Grimrock. Yeah, but but the application pro, uh, uh, process isn't the easiest, so uh, it's it's it and and it would take time out of uh, other stuff. So now now we're done trying to do the iOS version of the uh, Grimrock one. So that's keeping us busy at the moment. Yeah, how's that project coming along? It's 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 actually coming finally pretty pretty nicely along. Um, I'm just doing the uh, new UI graphics there, and uh, it's 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 playable already. And uh, there's just some tuning tuning around it. I I guess it can be played through already, but there's still some way to go. But it's it's coming along. When when can we expect to see the Atari ST version? <laughs> um, we'll, I'll have to ask Petri for it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool. Yeah. Uh, so just a couple last things here. Uh, this is kind of fun questions, I guess. But you know, what's your favorite monster in the game? Um, Maybe I, we could do it for Grimlock One and Two. Um, I, I would have to say the Trickster. Oh, or, that bastard! Or the, or the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That uh, leprechaun-looking dude. 
Yeah. Or, and uh, I, I, I also love the um, rattling boss with the big cannon, so he, oh, he's a yeah. really badass guy. See, I told you, bring in the rats. Yeah. That makes everything better. Sure, sure. Pass that the- leprechaun, <laughs> though, what do you call him, the trickster? Yeah, trickster. Man, I thought I was hallucinating the first time I saw that guy. Yeah. Well, what kind uh, of mania spawned that beast? <laughs> it's there, There's a catch when you get to the uh, end of the game, so... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We don't want to spoil anything. Yeah, well, you only <laughs> or somebody like eating some Lucky Charms and, yeah. oh, you know, <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah, he, he's a lucky guy whenever he isn't throwing bombs at you, so. Yeah, he's a bastard with those bombs. Yeah. <laughs> Man. And, and that laughter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I keep trying to kill him, but he keeps disappearing in like a little cloud yeah. of smoke, so. Yeah. All right, let's see. So just a couple last things here. This is from uh, Esteban Minaguzzi. He says, why are the spiders so hard to kill? I, I, I'd say they're easier than the first <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, definitely not so scary, I'd say. I, 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 I'd say that they were much tougher and scarier in the first one. Now, now you get to encounter them uh, in a more open open cave so so they're easier to kill but maybe there's just a couple of more than <laughs> around this time but <laughs> yeah i actually found them easier to kill than the those sort of beholder looking things or the little floating eyes are really tough yeah yeah uh, those one who spit the uh the with the wings or with the tentacles tentacles okay you have to see the other guys so but there's ones with wings yeah all no. the sort of winged ladies. Um, yeah, you, you'll get the floating eye with the wings. You'll get there soon. <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 we call them octopuses. Um, so uh, they're, they're a bit tougher with, with, with their blinding thingies. Oh, yeah, I have encountered those. They make your screen go sort of black and wobbly. Yeah, and yeah. you're r- running around the, on the uh, bridges in the in the mines so <laughs> it's, you guys are evil yeah i, I fell more than <laughs> once <laughs> yeah, it's kind of wondering about that too i mean do you guys uh, i guess you have your own parties do you does every member of the team play through the game with a different party or something like that yeah that we kind of play test it yeah i've been through the game a couple of times but uh, our level designer auntie has like i don't know he's packing like two thousand hours on the game so so he's, he's been uh, like speed playing it through like dozens of times. So, but he, he's he's just doing the main quest and uh, killing automatically the monsters. But but yeah, we 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 had to play a, a lot of different uh, combos of the game. Do you guys watch the forums and the reviews and things like that and change make changes if you're. Like are, are there puzzles? Like let's say everybody's getting stuck on a puzzle, particular puzzle. What would would you change it somehow? Um, we've made some tweaks um, uh, with some more obscure puzzles, but uh, we don't want to change them too much. But it, they they are really hard to um, balance balance because uh, um, it's it easy breaks to save game so. We don't we don't want to mess with those but but yeah we we read the forums and uh i really enjoy watching let's play videos uh and uh that's something we we watch a lot of from green rock one also and uh that's that's where you learn learn uh all the mistakes you've done you you've done in the game so it's really really helpful so what and, are some of those things that you you noticed in the first one well <sighs> Um, maybe st- uh, stuff what people um, uh, interpret interpret some some something. Um, so now now we know what people are looking and how they are thinking uh, when they're solving uh, puzzles or stuff like that. So uh, we we kind of know the general thought process in them so we can uh, you know if we want to twist it or, or 
or taken an advantage of that. So the same same goes with the graphics. So uh, I know how to, you know, emphasize something to maybe tell a story behind uh, between the lines. Yeah, it's just fascinating. I mean, that's something that I guess you would have been really hard to do before YouTube, and you know the. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really helpful, and uh, it's it's always fun. Uh, Somehow I don't get bored watching the game, even though I, I, I've been working with it so like two, two or three years. So it's it's actually really, really rewarding to watch watch them. And uh, you know the the guys who played the first one, they are just looking around in in awe, like oh, there's clouds, oh, pretty stars and stuff like that. It's it's really fun. Because they they know how to appreciate it, so so a lot of hard work is is paying off. And so just uh, I got two questions left. Uh, this yeah. is John Zaman. Uh, he says, "Did you ever play the? Did, did did you guys ever play Eye of the Beholder as research for making Legend of Grimrock? And were you ever tempted to put any puzzles from that game into it?" Um. Yes, we have played it, but. Uh, they have been more like a reference of um, uh, when we get stuck on, let's say, like uh, uh, we don't know how to do uh, uh, some UI, for example, some UI problem, so uh, the user interface problem. So we, we occasionally go back and see how they solve the problem and uh, maybe take some influences of, of there and um, I guess there was a couple of um, Quentin Tarantino like uh, nods to uh, Dungeon Master puzzles so uh, as, a, as a like um, giving credit to the uh, the real master of the game so so uh, we, we, we have done, done some research those games and like, uh, of course, uh, Pedri and Antino's Dungeon Master back and forth. So, so there there has to be at, at least some unconscious influences there. So, you, do you guys ever talk to, or you guys ever ever hear from those developers, uh, FTL or uh, Westwood? I think they'd be writing you and saying, "Hey, it's pretty cool what you guys are doing." I, there was some, at least we, I think we wanted to send a key, but that we couldn't get the um, contact, but or something like that. We, we would want to, uh, you know, like send a copy or some, something like that. To, but I don't remember what, what happened with that one. Well, they, it would be cool to like meet those guys or something. So, because they're, they're like the heroes. All right, so this is my last question for you. Uh, you uh, so what? Are, what is the future? I mean, you guys are obviously still basking and probably uh, exhausted from the <laughs> making the second game. But you know, is there talk of a, a third game yet, or what that might look like? First of all, we want to concentrate on the finally getting the iOS version out. So there's still a lot of work, and uh, then we have the Mac port of the Grimlock 2. We should do that also and uh, then it would be nice to have a application because <laughs> uh, we haven't had a vacation in two years so uh, so You guys can't take a vacation, that would make it take longer for us to get Grimrock 3. Yeah, yeah, but um, I wouldn't hold my breath for <laughs> Grimlock 3 now. <laughs> so we'll see. We, we We'll we'll take some time out and uh, let's we'll we'll see if we um, want to continue with Grimrock. Well, so you're not even sure you want to continue at this point. Uh, at this point, I'm there's a lot of rock <laughs> in there, so <laughs> so I'm I'm not sure. It, um, it, it we we just need to take some some like step back to see if we. Because we were pouring our hearts to this project, and uh, uh, I, I, it's it's uh, we we threw everything we got in this one. So 
So I don't know if there's anything left there. So I like you got a little postpartum depression going on there. <laughs> yeah, I just exhausted. <laughs> Well, I mean, we're, it's the studio. Have you talked about doing other things besides this uh, Grimrock series? Um, occasionally, yes, but um, we've been so focused with this one, so there's really not there. There haven't been really much, that much time, but um, at least there's been some. Um, you know, Petri and Antti do those little demos in some kind of Ludum Dare contest and stuff like that. So maybe one of them spawns something, some next project or something like that, or who knows, maybe we we go back in the dungeon and uh, do something with Grimrock IP, who knows, the sky is open, let's say. <laughs> yeah, literally, right? Well, thanks, Yuho, for taking the time out to talk to us about Grimrock. Is there anything that you wanted to mention that we didn't get to? Um... I'd say um, if if people are playing the game, I I, I strongly encourage, encourage them to try to solve it by themselves. And uh, if they get stuck, don't go to YouTube or forums to find the easy answer. It's it's so much rewarding. The game is so much better when you solve it by yourself. It's it's it, it gives so much more back uh, if if you uh, you know solve some hard riddle or puzzle by yourself you you're, you're going like whoa I'm the smartest smartest gamer alive so it's it's really what 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 the green rock is all, all about so uh, we we want to respect the players and uh, we we hope that they respect the game and uh, it's 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 something that we've been really uh, pushing the game towards so so it, it would be uh, all the uh, puzzle and puzzles and uh, riddles would be logical and uh, so you can solve them without uh, going going to the forums and stuff like that so so do you have any practical advice for somebody that is just stuck um what helped for me is you know like if I get stuck uh, I don't <laughs> I didn't go through our files and uh, <laughs> level editor to look. I, I, I went to the other place, like like the wizard says in the in 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 the bog. And so if you get stuck stuck or uh, counter um, too strong enemy, just go somewhere else and uh, level up and uh, uh, process process the puzzle. In back of your head, and uh, maybe come back next next day. So and uh, then the puzzle could be clear. At least it it worked for me a couple of times. Yeah, that one about the uh, pushing that block around for the direction of the tundra and the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that I was that. Uh, well, what? <laughs> yeah, when, when you first pop in there, it's, it's like a, it's it's one of those moments. <laughs> yeah, but you're definitely right, though. I mean, if you do resist that temptation. And sometimes it, what I find, I'll, I'll go to sleep and it's suddenly in the morning I'm like, I know what to do. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's and you just can't wait to get back in there and try it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what's, what it's all about because um, the other, other choice is that you fire up your browser and, and Google <laughs> it. So, and then you go with, and you don't get anything out of it except for like Steam achievement or stuff, stuff like that. So. Uh, it's, it's, it's so much better when you uh, come up with the answer by yourself. Well, agreed. Well, like, again, you, uh, you uh, thanks for taking the time. It's been lots of fun. hope people will buy uh, Grimrock 2. Yeah. I, I'm just it's selling pretty well, right? I'm sure. It's, it's okay, yeah. yeah. We're getting great reviews, and uh, 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 the meta score is really high right now. And, uh, um, it's it's going going good. Let's let's hope it continues. And that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with a review of Legend of Grimrock Two. 
I've uh, already played it all the way through, so I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing that with you. If you'd like to buy it now, though, uh, just find the link in the show notes to the GOG, G-O-G dot com site. Just make sure you use the link in the show notes, because uh, that way you'll be supporting uh, Match Hat at no additional cost to you. I think the game is uh, $24 right now on GOG. Now, you could you could buy it on Steam, true, but uh, that's not going to support Match Hat. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not saying you can't, but uh, just bear that in mind, guys. I we really, really appreciate the help. Uh, also, as always, I thank you very, very, very much, guys, uh, to anyone who has supported Matt Chat, uh, either through uh, buying games on GOG or by uh, supporting me directly on the Patreon site. So if you would like to have your name in the credits and be part of this Matt Chat thing, uh, just go to the Patreon link in the show notes and you can uh, subscribe for any amount you want. You know, a buck, an episode, five dollars, uh, whatever you're comfortable with, and whatever the show is worth. Really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very, very much. All right. So, what about the news from the Matt Cave? Well, uh, a little bad news to start off with: uh, the Black Glove Kickstarter. Uh, this was the team of uh, Bioshock Infinite uh, designers. Apparently, uh, even though I thought their uh, trailer looked or their uh, pitch looked really good, looked like they're really doing some interesting things with this uh, first-person shooter genre. Uh, it failed, bit kind of big time, uh, catastrophically, uh, 300k, $300,000 short of their goal. Uh, so that's not good news for them. You know, again, I, I hope that people don't take these uh, failed Kickstarters too hard and they don't give up, because I really liked, uh, you know, what I was seeing in that pitch. So hopefully they'll find a way to, to uh, make the game anyway. Now, uh, some really awesome news, uh, especially if you're a fan of the arcade scene of the 80s and 90s. The site Archive, uh, Internet Archive, or just archive.org, uh, you know, they're pretty well known for archiving all sorts of uh, old videos, uh, civil defense films, you know, the old uh, uh, one with the turtle. Uh, what's that one called? <laughs> I can't think of it right off the top of my head, but you've probably seen the site before. Uh, well, anyway, they have uh, taken to archiving classic arcade games now. They've got 900 games up there, and you can play them in a browser all for free. Uh, and I, I was playing a Burger Time a while ago. It works great. You can even hook up a controller to this thing. Uh, so that's pretty uh, pretty doggone cool. I'll put the link on the show notes. So if you want to kill some time playing some, some of your old favorites from back in the day, uh, I think you'll have a lot of fun with that website. And, you know, and let me know what games you, you find on there and what, you, what you're playing uh, so we can all check them out. Okay, what about that ale of the week? Well, uh, this week I got the last... Of the uh, three beers that uh, Christian Holstrom and uh, Tor uh, sent me, uh, this is the Lufsta IPA, uh, the India Pale Ale. Um, let's see, it says six uh, six percent, so not bad. A little stronger than than a, I guess that's about one percent stronger than um, most beers, uh, so that should be quite nice. Uh, let's see, I don't think I'll be able to read any more of the stuff on the bottle though. Uh, but anyway, so the last one, I'm a little sad that I'm down to my, my last one from these guys. I really enjoy the other two, but anyway, let's get this Lufsta IPA open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Lufsta IPA here in the rather excellent drinking horn. <sighs> this smells so good. I wish you guys could smell this. I mean, you really smell the uh, just extraordinary, uh, the, the, the smell of these hops, just uh, very crisp uh, smelling. Uh, I can really tell this is going to have a, a hell of a lot of flavor. Uh, not surprising given it's the, uh, usually an IPA will have a, quite a hoppy punch to it, quite a bite, uh, which is kind of why I like it, so I'm really looking forward to this. Um, anyway, here's a cheers to you, uh, Christian and Tor. Thanks again uh, for sending me these. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be kind of boring next week to go back to whatever's available around here. So, uh, thank you very much. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Yeah, just as I was expecting, lots of flavor. Uh, you do kind of sort of get some bitterness here with these hops, but you know, at the same time, it's actually quite uh, refreshing. It's uh, kind of cool, you know, if you will. It's kind of a uh, nice, thick, and uh, you know, just, just a really nice flavor. I'm going to try it again. Yeah, I mean, this one's just really just uh, hitting all the right uh, spots on my tongue and in the back of my throat <laughs> or whatever. 
Uh, just, you know, it's, it's one of the best IPAs I think I've had. Um, the flavor is just right. You know, there's not too much. It doesn't try to, uh, you know, uh, uh, overwhelm you with flavor. Uh, but you do get a very nice uh, taste going down. Then the, and then the aftertaste is quite pleasant. You uh, taste the hops in there, but it's not so bitter that you, <laughs> you know, don't want to have another drink. Well, let me try it one more time. Yeah, this one just uh, really hits it out the park. You know, if you like IPAs, I don't see how you go wrong with this. Uh, just the right amount of uh, hoppiness and bitterness, very uh, sophisticated uh, flavor on it. You know, I, you know what can I say? Definitely going to go five out of five drinking horns on this one. I uh, really pleased with this uh, with this one. You know, this is a, just a really solid India Pale Ale. I'm going to have to see if I can <laughs> find these around here somewhere. A uh, Lusta IPA, yeah, it's really really good. You can find this. I definitely recommend it. I think you will enjoy it. All right, let's wrap this up with a quotation. And I was looking uh, for quotations about uh, problem solving. I was thinking about Yuho, and he, he was talking about puzzles and you know how easy it is to get stuck and all that. And I, I found this a uh, pretty fun quotation from George Bernard Shaw, the uh, playwright. It goes something like this: "The single biggest problem in communication." is the illusion that it has taken place. <laughs> so think about that, and see you guys next week. Don't you worry, love. We'll have everything ship shape in a jiffy. That's it. Nothing to worry about. Julie, it's Tuttle downstairs. Who can worry, eh? <laughs> Tuttle? His name's Tuttle. There must be some mistake. Mistake? <laughs> we don't make mistakes. <laughs>